Right, Lucy, a few things. Um, first off, look how much body there actually is, because the answer is not a lot. We haven't even got fingers, we haven't got uh, feet, we've got one little toe bone, um, we've got only a small amount of the pelvis and not a lot of the skull. So first of all, it's very incomplete. To reconstruct an entire hominid from this and to place it firmly into the evolutionary history of humans is quite a big step. But what can we actually learn about Lucy? Was she a hominid? Was she on the way to becoming human? Or was she just an ape? Well, first off, the differences are incredible. It is often trumped the similarities between uh, chimpanzees and humans and you know, hominids and humans, but nobody ever talks about the differences. And really, it's the differences that show how different or how similar you really are. First off, her jaw. It is a definitive V-shaped. Humans have a very characteristic U-shape to our jaw. That is extremely definitely a ape's jaw. Also, what about the pelvis? Well, the pelvis does look like it is in an upright position, or at least a position for upright walking. But Professor Lovejoy, who actually worked on this, there is video evidence of him using a Dremel to drill it, to correct it, in order to put it into a pelvis shape that looks like it walks upright. Now, I don't know about you, but to me that doesn't sound like proper science. Deliberately changing the bone structure using power tools in order to reconstruct the way that a fossil is designed. Not at all uh, proper in accordance to the scientific rules and community. What kind of pelvis does Lucy have? Well, Stern and Sussman said, the fact that the anterior portion of the iliac blade faces laterally in humans, uh, he's talking at, this is facing lateral out here rather than over, uh, but not in chimps is obvious. The marked resemblance of Lucy to the chimpanzee is equally obvious. So you get the picture? The creatures like Lucy have the ape orientation of the iliac blades. Now, what are the evolutionists going to do about that? You're not going to believe this. <laughs> Nova? Have you heard Nova? They, there was a PBS Nova series in which Dr. Owen Lovejoy, a very distinguished, famous paleoanthropologist, was involved. And he's looking at Lucy's skeleton here, and he's lamenting the fact that the hips are all wrong. They're supposed to be human-like hips, so you can walk the way the Latoli footprints showed she walked. But they don't look like human hips, they look like ape hips. What to do about this? Watch it. You'll get a big kick out of this. The ape that stood up, it was a revolutionary idea. We needed Owen Lovejoy's expertise again because the evidence wasn't quite adding up. The knee looked human, but the shape of her hip didn't. Superficially, her hip resembled a chimpanzee's, which meant that Lucy couldn't possibly have walked like a modern human. But Lovejoy noticed something odd about the way the bones had been fossilized. When I put the two parts of the pelvis together that we had, this part of the pelvis has pressed so hard and so completely into this one that it caused it to be broken into a series of individual pieces which were then fused together in later fossils. So you see they were uh, broken and they don't fit together properly. Uh, they did speculate in the program as to exactly who was responsible for breaking the hip and uh, current scientific evidence suggests perhaps a deer stepped on it. Here you can see a deer foot stepping uh, on the bone. Isn't that a bummer? Uh, let's uh, see where it goes from here. Uh, this has caused the two bones, in fact, to fit together so well so that well. they're in an anatomically impossible position. <laughs> the perfect fit was an illusion that made Lucy's hip bone seem to flare out like a chimp's. But all was not lost. <laughs> this is a power saw, friends. You may want to put your goggles on. Lovejoy decided he could restore the pelvis to its natural shape. 
didn't want to tamper with the original, so he made a copy in plaster. Notice he's removing whole parts, not just cutting. He cut the damaged pieces out and put them back together the way they were before Lucy died. <laughs> it was a tricky job, but after taking the kink out of the pelvis, it all fit together perfectly, like a three-dimensional jigsaw puzzle. Look how perfect. You can read a newspaper through the hole. As a result, the angle of the hip looks nothing like a chimp's, but a lot like ours. <laughs> yeah, now, this is what we call science. You can teach this in the public schools, but you can't criticize it, because if you do, uh, that would be religious. So, uh, <clears throat> well, I think perhaps the best way to uh, conclude is to let an evolutionist himself uh, conclude here. David Pilbeam is a very, very distinguished, and in my view, a very, very honest, uh, as many are, uh, evolutionist. And uh, he has looked at uh, the data, having spent a career uh, studying the uh, human fossil record. And in reviewing Leakey's book, Origins, some years ago, an American scientist, he had a moment of uh, real candor. Listen to what this very famous human evolutionist has to say. My reservations concern not so much this book, but the whole subject of paleoanthropology. But introductory books or book reviews are hardly the place to argue that perhaps generations of students of human evolution, including myself, have been flailing about in the dark, that our database is too sparse, too slippery for it to be able to mold our theories. Rather, the theories are more statements about us and ideology than about the past. Paleoanthropology reveals more about how humans view themselves than it does about how humans came about. But that is heresy. <laughs> wow. No creationist ever put it any better than that.